This is the second video for Lab 1 in the Hydrologic Applications Workshop series of the Conservation Applications of LIDAR. This material can be accessed from the MinGeo website under LIDAR, Elevation LIDAR Training Workshops. This is the second part of the first lab. I'm continuing where we left off. Now for this part of the lab we're going to calculate a TPI, the Topographic Position Index. So I'm going to turn off the material from the earlier part of the lab and make sure as I talked, spoke before that in Customized Toolbar the Land Facet Analysis is turned on. The Land Facet uh, Corridor Tools are turned on. Now the Land Facet Corridor Tools are available to install within ArcGIS from this site uh, http uh, colon backslash backslash corridor design dot org dot downloads and you're able to select that that land facet corridor tools and the land facet corridor tools here are the ArcMap 10 extension now when you bring that down you'll have to unzip it and install that and after it's installed, you'll also have to run a little utility in ArcGIS that installs the DLL to actually put that toolbox in the correct place. Now, when you inst after you run the EXE, when you unzip it and install it, it installs the software, everything in the right place, but it gives you a little readme file that you'll have to look at, and you'll want to run through and actually register the uh, use the Esri registration utility and if in most cases I've seen it doesn't work uh, and you've got to read this little block here to actually run this utility at the correct place the ESRI reg ASM right with the proper parameters and you could take a look at the batch file which is included in the download and make sure that the common program files path name is correct so that the little batch file actually registers the software correctly. Okay, now we're going to use the land facet corridor tools to calculate the TPI. So I select it from the toolbar and I move down to select the top the TPI, the topographic position index tools, and I'm going to calculate the TPI. The very first one on the list. Now I'm going to set my parameters and I'll make the box a little bigger for you to see. Now I'm going to take the, I'm basically taking the default parameters. The default is circle and cells and a radius of three. And so I'm, uh, just for example here, but I'm going to name the output file with a little drop down to name the TPI and I'm going to call it CIR3 well for circle three so I can remember what, um, what I did. I'm going to click OK. Now when it's done I get a little report that I could print. I'm going to hit exit. And now I'm displaying my TPI, the terrain. And what we're seeing are the high values are those objects in the landscape that are higher than the mean elevation of the neighbors. Okay, so we've basically taken the average all around a point of the elevation all around a point and we've compared that point to the average and the ones that are sticking out are red and the ones that are green are lower so you get an idea what the TPI shows you. I'm going to change the symbology for it so I'm going to right click properties symbology and I'm going to start with the display and I'm going to use bilinear again because what it's continuous data so we want to use bilinear and in symbology we're going to use stretched and I'm going to use the grayscale grayscale standard deviations 2 and from current extent same sort of process okay you get a better idea when it's using grayscale the high and the low now in the instructions we talk a little bit about how you would do this if you were doing it in ArcGIS without the land facet corridor tools and basically it's a several step process where you would uh, do a focal statistics of the entire DEM um, 03 
and uh, and the focal statistic you'd be using would be mean, okay, because it's the average of all the neighboring cells. And then we would use minus, we'd subtract our value from it, uh, our DEM value from that uh, focal mean layer to get the TPI. Okay, now we're going to display some this data, and we want to turn on our hill shade and make sure the hill shade it transparency is set to a hundred percent and display okay so it is okay now we're going to change our TPI we'll zoom into a particular area and we're going to change our TPI to be the to be fifty percent transparent so I've got the TPI over the the Hill shade, and I'm making this 50% transparent by linear. And you get an idea now with the shadows showing through the TPI, uh, a, a little bit better idea of the relief in the landscape. So it gives you an idea, and you can see here the the water courses uh, are the um, uh, here very clearly. So you could digitize them or resolve problems or anal further analyze them. Now the real interesting thing is to change the TPI to uh, the fire uh, settings. Sean's settings, so I'm going to leave the display and I'm going to move to symbology and set the fire settings. Okay, and the fire settings are in display uh, and the transparency is 30% by linear. You remember the minus 30 and the 70 that you had to put in at the display options and then the symbology we're picking the fifth from the bottom and we're making sure it's two and from current display here we apply and we have the fire so the idea is that the roads and ditch banks pop out with this color scheme for easy interpretation of the features of those things that convey water on the landscape. So this is the idea to have the TPI with the fire over the uh, hill shade. Now just for your reference you could use the uh, the image uh, the display tool to actually pan across the Mingeo uh, imagery so we could show so I could use the Mingeo to pan. Now I have to have the, the uh, the Mingeo at the top and I could pan across it to see that uh, those features and to get an idea of how how the hydrological features exist on the landscape and compare to the I'm using the pull down okay compare to the image now it actually might make more sense if we put this down on the bottom put this above the the hill shade here and then we changed our panning uh, to the TPI so that what we were revealing we were pulling away the the TPI uh, from the the um, uh, aerial imagery now we've lost our hill shade so that we want to bring our hill shade down below that and now we can see the um, examine what's underneath it. See these swiping is very useful. Okay, now that's the end of this exercise. Thank you.